And uh, I'm going to say that, oh, I'm restarting. Um, and I'm going to say that uh, if you're finding this a lot of uh, syntax information, uh, you might want to refer to my uh, web tutorial, which is linked uh, as well to this uh, video, uh, which has a table of, of all this stuff. Um, so, one of the most powerful parts of HTML generation in the framework is inclusions. Uh, we've talked a little about inclusions, but didn't really say why they were useful. Well, they're really useful because you can put one in the middle of termerized HTML. And this gives you uh, encapsulation. Uh, this allows you to make a call uh, to make a piece of a web page and then just kind of use it wherever you need it. So if you have some fancy button that does a little pop-up with a face on it when, when the person rolls over, that can just be an inclusion. Um, so here we have a straightforward inclusion. Um, and in this case, uh, this inclusion just... Uh, uh, now, inclusions, remember, return tokenized HTML. And this inclusion happens to just call two other inclusions. So there was no point in going to termerized and then go, and going back to, to tokenized. So I just call the two. It's a DCG. Now, inclusion A does need to generate some HTML, and so it's going to do that with termerized HTML and the HTML slash slash one, the HTML one uh, DCG, and the same for inclusion B. Okay, so we have ultimately generated in here this pair of paragraphs, inclusion A and inclusion B. Here's a little bit fancier uh, version and um, called Fancy Border uh, that is going to be a meta um, HTML uh, uh, inclusion. And it needs to, uh, and in this case, our website, for some reason, has very fancy borders that have names, dot madness and something else. And uh, uh, our fancy borders, we have all, uh, we're going to generate them. But then, of course, we have to tell it what to stick inside. So we're going to provide an inclusion. Uh, so we're going to provide, actually, some termerized HTML which in this case is just an inclusion. So let's look at fancy borders. Here's fancy borders. It's pretty straightforward. It, take, it depends on the style. And then it is going to give me, in this case, a dotted or a solid border, depending on the styling I requested. Um, uh, for example, the, the border might be uh, might depend on uh, uh, the user's level. So the little block things on your website might have a fancy border if they're from a premium member. And uh, uh, so we're going to send in a style with it. And then um, in this case, we're just going to have the contents. Well, this should just work fine. The contents are just going to be an inclusion. That's valid uh, HTML. Um, but, um, you know, here we have a div, and then it does some styling, and then inside that is the contents. But we have a little problem, and that is that the module uh, has changed. 
Fancy Borders is in, its, in a, is in its own module. So let's go back here, and gosh, an inclusion. And how does it know where to find an inclusion? Well, basically we need to warn Prolog that Fancy Border is going to be accepting termerized HTML. So, um, so the way we'll do this is to use the, the directive HTML meta, uh, which mar uh, marks the argument types for Fancy Border. Fancy Border, of course, is a DCG, so the last two elements are always going to be question mark, question mark. Uh, for the two extra arguments in the DCG. In this case, we pass in dot madness or boring, and then we pass in, and then the next argument is actually the included HTML. So that's how you have to handle uh, doing inclusions across uh, modules and doing, uh, and doing uh, meta inclusions. All of this is great, except that uh, occasionally you do have just chunks of HTML that you want to put in as boilerplate. Uh, if you have some uh, API to Stripe or um, a Google Analytics block of code or an embedded YouTube video or something, you may just have a chunk of HTML and you don't really want to convert that to termerized HTML. Just, uh, so, so there are quasi-quotes, and there is an HTML quasi-quoter. Uh, the HTML quasi-quoter uh, just looks like an, inclu uh, an inclusion. It'll generate a backslash -ish list, um, actually. And, um, and then you can just... You have to call the HTML 1.1 because you're going to get um, termerized HTML, and then uh, and then you can tie uh, and then you do a quasi quote uh, with the usual curly uh, or bar HTML, the arguments, and then just HTML, and so that's a much preferable method to the backslash open uh, you know to the backslash list method of including just ordinary HTML